Dear learners, greetings from IIT Gavati. We are in the MOOCs course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustion. Today we are going to start a new module that is module V, fifth module and the title of this module is Combustion and Thermochemistry. So, from now onwards we will move towards the combustion part of this course and we will see how our understanding in thermodynamics are helpful for combustion studies. This combustion is very vital in our day to day life and in fact it is in existence since human civilizations. So, the very basic uh, intention for this uh, module is to introduce the thermodynamic concepts in com combustion applications. So, in this module we will have four important lectures. The first one is thermodynamic considerations of combustions. Here we will be discussing about uh, fundamental aspects of combustion and various terminologies that are used while dealing with the combustion studies. Then we will apply the conservation of energy for reacting systems. The word reacting means that means there is a chemical reaction that takes place when combustion happens. Uh, we will try to see how our understanding of some um, uh, ener energy con conservation will be useful for chemical reactions. Then we will uh, try to introduce some important uh, parameters which are very familiar in the combustion studies. First thing is um, adiabatic flame temperatures, then uh, entropy of course, entropy we have used uh, in our basic uh, thermodynamic course, but how that entropy is a important phenomena which will decide the direction of a chemical reactions. Now, in addition to this, we have another parameter, thermodynamic parameter, which we have introduced in module 3, which is Gibbs functions. And here we will see that how Gibbs function finds its applications in reacting systems. In the last lecture, uh, we will be talking about the products of combustions and uh, effective energy utilizations means that uh, uh, during a combustion process by uh, considering the, uh, the com constituents of combustion products, we can uh, predict whether we have effectively utilized the fuel's energy or not. Now, if not, then what is the methods in which we can effectively use the energy um, utilizations during a combustion process. So, this is about uh, overall uh, um, introduction about the module 5 that is combustion and thermochemistry. Now, we will start the first lecture on this module that is thermodynamic considerations of combustions. So, in this lecture that is we are in the lecture number 19 that is overall lecture number and first lecture of module 5 is the thermodynamic uh, considerations of combustions where we will be uh, dealing with the combustion fundamentals, some terms like stoichiometry, equivalence ratio, products of combustions and we will see that how thermodynamics properties can be evaluated for a reacting system. Now, let us start the first segment that is combustion fundamentals. As I mentioned that combustion is, is in existence since human civilization and in fact, it is one of the important uh, ancient discovery. So, uh, basically during that type point of time, people used to uh, think of uh, fire of woods. But uh, in reality what happens during the fire process, there is a fuel and there is a oxygen and as a result we have the heat that is going to be generated. In fact, till today 
there is a self sustained heat release mechanism that happens in the sun so in if you look at uh, sun's view point you can see that it is the infinite source of fuel which keeps on burning and because of which we we are in the rec receiving end uh, in terms of um, light and uh, of course during this combustion process there is some exhaust emissions which might have occurred uh, in the deep space or in the vicinity of sun and uh, many a times we call this as a solar storm okay so we call and, and this there nothing but the exhaust that comes out from the during self thrust and combustion for the, which is happens in the sun uh, so uh, this is just uh, to give the uh, importance or of uh, the topic combustion uh, uh, and in our viewpoint, we will uh, view it as a chemical reaction between a fuel and air. So, fuel and air means it is an oxidizer. So, when it, um, they react, we get a combustion products. So, in totality, we say there is a, some reactants and there are some products. So, by definition, one can say rapid oxidation to generate heat or light or both or slow and slow oxidation accompanied by little heat or no light is regarded, regarded as the basic definition of combustion. Now, when you say this combustion, it can occur in a flame mode or non-flame mode. We all know that um, when the combustion happens in engines, uh, SI engines or CI engines, uh, we can say there are some, there is flame is generated and that keeps on keeps propagating um, that is in the um, SI engine combustion. Whereas, in the diesel engines there are um, auto ignition of fuel and because of this we get a diffusion flame in the CI engine combustion. Then moving further to the another side of this combustion process in reality what happens? Basically fuel and oxidizer they mix or they form as reactants and when there is an ignition then what happens fuel is burnt so by fuel is burnt what do you mean is is that internal energy for the fuel is broken so in in totality what we can say that there are uh, bonds that is um, that happens when you consider the di diatomic species or monoatomic species now when you consider this a monoatomic species will have a transnational kinetic energy. When you look at the um, diatomic species, the internal energy results from the transnational uh, together with energy from the vibrations. So, basically speaking by uh, adding uh, through this combustion process, we are trying to break the chemical bonds. Now, as a result, we get uh, the heat release that we realize. So, uh, ultimately what fuels that we are been using till today, they are typically hydrocarbon fuels and by using this fuel energy, we are producing the power. So, our main intention of this combustion studies is to look at this chemical reactions its dissociation process studies this thermodynamic analysis when such a combustion analysis study the combustion takes place and this uh, um, this fundamental principle will also allow us to determine the equilibrium compositions of mixture the next uh, uh, important topic that we are going to discuss is the uh, reactants products and stoichiometric coefficients we mentioned that uh, during a combustion process there has to be some reactants and there has to be products. For example, uh, in a hydrogen combustion that means when hydrogen and oxygen this they mix we get water and during this process it is a chemical reaction. So, what we say the reactants consist of hydrogen and oxygen products is the water. So, we have we got the definition means what is reactants and what is products 
now when you write these things in the equation form we call it as a chemical equations so all the combustion reactions uh, are expressed in terms of chemical um, equations and the way we say that a mass balance uh, is applicable for thermodynamic analysis we also have the mass of reactants and mass of the products should have should be equal and if you look at this particular reaction hydrogen and oxygen it gives water so the number of species that are involved here is hydrogen oxygen and you can see that we have to see that there is a um, number of hydrogens which is there in the reactant side should match with the num number of hydrogen in the product side also uh, hydrogen may not exist in in its own form but it has mixed with oxygen to form water but if this hydrogen exists in water in the product so what it says is that total mass of each chemical element of the products must be same on both sides of the equations but however one th one important thing is that if you talk in terms of moles the moles may be different if you look at here there is one uh, maybe you can say one kilo mole of hydrogen half kilo mole of oxygen and when they mix so the total kilo mole will be one and half kilo mole but when you see the product it is only one kilo mole of water so the coefficients that is stoichiometric coefficients that means what we say is that this when you in a balanced chemical reactions the stoichiometric coefficients they are not same that means in this equation 2 kg is the stoichiometric coefficient for hydrogen 16 kg would be the stoichiometric coefficient for oxygen but if you say 2 kg and 16 kg they are going to match as 18 kg uh, of water apart from this then we have another parameter which is fuel so fuel uh, till date we have fuels which is available in the form of hydrocarbon fuels now when i say fuels they are nothing but the mixture of combustible chemical elements mainly carbon hydrogen and they both are called together as hydrocarbons then we have also sulfurs but however the sulfur has least energy least contributor in the energy productions but it is the main source of pollution and other corroding uh, environment now the when i say complete combustions so fuel must burn with ox um, oxidizer so the for this thing there will be a complete combustions it can takes place when all the carbons in the fuel is burned to carbon dioxide that means when during a com complete combustion process the carbon in the fuel should form carbon dioxide the hydrogen should form water sulfur will form sulfur dioxide so this is how we have to get if not then it is a incomplete combustion so in totality we try to avoid the incomplete combustions now coming back to the fuel so fuel is nothing but a combustible substance which com mainly contains hydrogen and carbon commonly known as hydrocarbon and they exist in three phases first is in liquid phase in the form of gasoline diesel kerosene fuel oil so they are nothing but the liquid hydrocarbons derived from the crude petroleum products through distillation and cracking processes then we also have fuels in the gaseous form one such example is methane where gaseous hydrocarbons are obtained from the natural gas through certain chemical process and we also have uh, solid hydrocarbon fuels which is nothing but the coal so uh, the fuels are available in the game liquid solid and gaseous form and mostly till now we are we are very used to it we used to with respect to liquid fuels that is gasoline diesel and kerosene
then moving further fuel uh, as a whole it cannot burn so we need oxidizer so uh, but uh, the um, that means for every reactions oxygen is required for as mean uh, for a combustion process but what happens is that the usage of oxygen is not possible in combustion uh, applications usage of oxygen means i mean it's a pure oxygen so pure oxygen deriving from um, atmosphere is very critical task but normally what you do uh, we use air as a mode of supplier of oxygen so if you look at the composition of dry air in terms of mass fractions it is nitrogen is close to 78.08% oxygen is 20.95% argon is 0.93% carbon dioxide is 0.03% and rest of the other gases is 0.01% now if you look see the major constituents of air is nitrogen and oxygen so for the combustion study a effective way that means instead of ignoring uh, instead of taking all these components um, all other um, components like argon co2 and um, which are very minor components they are merged with nitrogen so for the combustion analysis what we study what we say is air consist of nitrogen and oxygen and in in terms of percentage we can write like this it is contains 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen on uh, molar basis with molar ratio of 3.75 which means if you want to take one mole of oxygen from air it is always accompanied by 3.76 mole of nitrogen so uh, uh, although you are using this nitrogen gas and this in a effective chemical reactions uh, the nitrogen becomes inert that means nitrogen has no role during the combustion process so basically speaking if you look at here uh, in a in a actual combustion process as i mentioned or complete combustion process all the fuel should burn that means carbon should come to carbon dioxide hydrogen should come to water to form water so in a complete uh, combustion process we will get co2 and water now uh, in same reaction when you be with air we can say in a complete combustion process we get same co2 and water but what remains intact or in not is the um, and the quantity of nitrogen gases in the reactant and products they remain intact so in a complete combustion process it is felt that nitrogen does not undergo in the chemical reactions or does not participate although it is given but it does not participate in the combustion process so it is regarded as inert uh, as a inert gas for the combustion process process but what happens although it is present but what happens during the chemical um, reactions the temp temperature goes off and uh, this when there is a uh, temperature goes more than 1000 or 1500 degree kelvin then what happens the nitrogen tries to break bonds of chemical that means nitrogen gas tries to dissociate so when it dissociates during this process it is more likely to react with the oxygen and the for to form uh, the uh, compounds like nitric oxide nitrogen dioxide and these are nothing but the source of um, uh, air pollution that means they are essential culprits for the combustion process this is this needs to be avoided and that why this happens because we do not get pure oxygen we do not have pure oxygen during a combustion process so we have to be very careful while dealing with this nitrogen and if whether it when it reacts what type of compound it forms 
the next important segment in the combustion process is a stoichiometry the word stoichiometry means it's a, a it is it is a parameter that is very common and uh, basically the the reactants uh, in the in a combustion process consist of fuel and air and when i say uh, a complete combustion process that means fuel requires adequate amount of air or exact quantity amount of air for a complete combustion process if this happens then we call it say stoichiometric conditions uh, that means in a complete combustion process stoichiometric air has to be supplied so for that reasons there are two parameters that pops up one is air fuel ratio and the fuel air ratio air fuel ratio in a react in a chemical reaction is the ratio of of the amount of air to the amount of fuel and this ratio also can be written either in mass basis or in the molar basis uh, now the minimum amount of air that supplies oxygen for a complete combustion of the fuel is known as theoretical amount of air and many a times you also use the theoretical amount of air which is same as the stoichiometric quantity of uh, air or that means stoichiometric quantity of oxidizer is needed for a complete combustion process when i say stoichiometric uh, combustion that means there is no free oxygen that appears now when uh, not necessarily that always a combustion process has to happen in a complete mode or stoichiometric air is being supplied uh, now if uh, when the when the uh, more than stoichiometric quantity of oxidizer is supplied then the mixture is said to be fuel lean that means it is rich in air lean in fuel when the when while su while supplying less quant uh, less than the quantity of stoichiometric oxidizer it results fuel rich mixtures now in a fuel rich mixture always free oxygen appears we'll see later point of time where how the free, free oxygen appears in the products in a fuel lean combustions uh, alternatively the when i say theoretical amount of air we also call as percentage excess air so theoretical amount air and stoichiometric they are same now we say uh, percent excess air that means if i say 100% theoretical air that means we are we are in the stoichiometric conditions if i say 150% theoretical air that means we have 50% excess air or a oxidizer now if i say 80% theoretical air which means 100% is actual th theoretical air but when you are putting uh, air for stoichiometric conditions when i say 80% of theoretical air which means it is equivalent to 20% deficit air or we say the fuel is rich so it's a rich fuel or lean fuel they are very common which we are which have been using we have been using during um, our ic engine course as well in the basic thermodynamic course so how to quantify this so first number what we say air fuel ratio which is af that is mass of air divided by mass of fuel now for this mass of air if you represent in terms of number of moles num molar quantity of air na into ma into ma means molecular weight of air divided by nf into uh, mf and when i put this uh, na by nf uh, instead of air fuel ratio we, we say molar um, air fuel ratio that means number of moles of air to the number of moles of fuel into its uh, molecular weight ratio ma by mf so this is how the relation between air fuel ratio uh, on uh, mass basis and air fuel ratio on molar basis af and af and af bar where af bar is represented in terms of molar basis now next parameter that we are going to discuss is the equivalence ratio so you already told about the um, excess air uh, deficit air now during a actual combustion process how do you uh, 
take a decision which parameter we need to uh, regulate. So, basically uh, instead of uh, uh, talking about air fuel ratio or fuel air ratio, another parameter is defined which is uh, equivalence ratio and it is the measure of fuel air ratio relative to the stoichiometric conditions. And we have discussed about the complete combustion process and incomplete combustion process. When a, there is a complete combustion process, it refers to a stoichiometric chemical reaction between fuel and air. Now, when you have incomplete combustion, it is a non stoichiometric situations. Now, to define this non stoichiometric situations, uh, the equivalence ratio is chosen as the one of the non dimensional parameters. In fact, its main advantage is that it says whether a mixture is rich in fuel or lean in fuel. The reactants form lean mixture when the equivalence ratio is less than unity and, the and when they, they form rich mixtures when they have equivalence ratio greater than unity. And the parameter that is used is phi that is equivalence ratio fuel air ratio actual divided by fuel air ratio stoichiometric and when is uh, when it is represented in terms of air fuel it is air fuel ratio stoichiometric by air fuel ratio actual and we also know what is the air fuel ratio we also know what is the fuel air ratio air fuel ratio is ma by mf fuel air ratio is mf by ma now, from this equation it is clear that when phi is less than 1, it is a lean fuel which means oxygen remains in the product. Uh, if you look at this equations, methane air combustion in a lean fuel. Let us start with a stoichiometric uh, uh, methane air combustion. Uh, uh, if you see here methane CH4 plus oxygen and it is inert nitrogen and here also uh, this inert nitrogen remains as it is 2 into 3.76 N2 and the combustion product is CO2 and H2O. So, it is a stoichiometric methane air combustion. Now, I say now if it is lean fuel that means rich in air, rich in means it is 150 percent theoretical or stoichiometric air. So, 150 percent means that means 1.5 times higher. So, when I say 1.5 times higher, uh, the air becomes 1.5 times higher. So, you have 3O2 into 3 into 3.76 and 2 and here when I make this reaction to happen in the products we have CO2, water, nitrogen, but what lands up is that free oxygen which is available in a uh, lean fuel situations for a methane air combustion. Now, another scenario we can have the rich fuel. Now, when you have rich fuel, we will have uh, carbon monoxide and onboard fuel in the products. Let us see how it happens. Uh, if you consider the stoichiometric reaction of isooctane air, that means it is another fuel. Isooctane is the fuel, air is the oxidizer. Uh, if you do that and in a balanced chemical reactions, it says that C8H18 plus 12.5 O2 plus 12.5 into 3.76 N2 will give 8 CO2, 9 H2O, 12.5 into 3.76 N2. But what we require is uh, rich fuel, that means rich fuel means 80 percent of stoichiometric air, that means it is air in deficit. So, if that is the case, the 12.5 becomes 10, it is 20 percent deficit, and oxygen nitrogen also will have 10 uh, as a stoichiometric coefficients. And then once you do this, then we can have a balanced chemical equations that forms CO2, water, nitrogen and the out and this here we have carbon monoxide as 
and as well as we will have unburnt fuels that remains and if fuel did not get sufficient quantity of air. An ideal situation would be phi is equal to uh, 1 which refers to a stoichiometric fuel which means at this situation we will have release of maximum energy from the fuel. Okay. Now, uh, uh, next segment that we are going to um, discuss is the products of combustion. Till this point of time we have seen fuel mixes with oxidizer to give combustion products, but uh, what are the products that comes and in ideal situation the products will be carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, as a carbon dioxide, water and nitrogen. Now, uh, that means this is a complete combustion to obtain the balanced chemical reaction. But what happens in an actual scenario, none of the combustion process is a complete combustion process. It is always will have incomplete combustion. So, to quantify that means how in whether it is incomplete depends on the whether we are uh, rich in fuel or lean in fuel and in the uh, parameters like NO, NOx, uh, CO all these uh, constituencies are likely to be present. Now, to quantify such parameters there are several devices that measures the composition of uh, combustion products namely or OSTAT analyzer, gas chromatograph, infrared analyzer, flame oxidation iodization de detectors and all these things they are reported as dry product analysis and they are represented in terms of mole fraction. So, basically all combustion products if you look at uh, these products CO2, nitrogen and um, this thing except water all products um, the analysis we do we call this as a dry product analysis in terms of mole fraction. But what happens water uh, here the question mark that comes in what happens to water. Now, this water depending on the temperature of the um, exhaust products water may exist in a vapor form or what happens if the vapor is exhausted to atmosphere it gets cooled and during this cooling process the water may form as uh, vapor may turn back uh, to liquid. So, when vapor water vapor changes its phase to liquid form, so it has to pass through a temperature which we commonly use the word in psychrometrics which is called as dew point temperatures. So, initially the gaseous products of combustion they are already at elevated higher temperatures and when they are released or cooled to, um, to the atmospheric pressure the water which was existed as a vapor from each changes its phase and they likely to they are likely to condensate and this condensation uh, has to happen or has to pass through the dew point temperature and this temperature depends at what partial pressures or how much uh, at what partial pressures that water vapor exist that we can find out number of uh, mole fraction of that constituents. Okay. The very basic point is that when the vapors begins to condense air or um, liquid droplets are formed they effectively uh, create corrosions in the metal parts, duct pipes all these things. So, this is the downside of the combustion process that continuous exposure of water uh, in the uh, metallic parts leads to corrosion and further damaging of surface. The last uh, segment of this part is to study the thermodynamic property analysis for a reacting systems. Uh, so, here the first basic assumption that we are going to make is that till this point of time before this combustion we have exhaustively discussed the multi component systems and they are treated as an ideal gas mixers. 
So, the reference line for the combustion study is that as if it is a mixture of reactants and products and we have to find out the um, each constituents their mole fractions their individual um, parameters and multiplied uh, and we have to multiply with that with respect to their respective mole fraction or mass fraction to get the effective um, thermodynamic parameters like we can say one they are like internal energy enthalpy entropy and this analysis has to be we have to recall uh, it as an ideal as a reference viewpoint we have to recall them as an ideal gas mixture to calculate these properties for example if you say internal energy is the summation of uh, the uh, the molar uh, specific internal energy multiplied by the mole fractions for all the components and same logic applies for enthalpy as well. Now, for entropy, for entropy we have to use that is similar philosophy is used, but entropy is calculated at temperature T and pressure because it is a function of temperature as well as pressures. But here to calculate this temperature and pressure uh, people use the Ref, uh, concept of absolute entropy where uh, we assign this reference value of uh, given constituents at reference pressure p ref, uh, p ref and and temperature uh, t reference temperatures and as we did in the ideal mixture analysis the reference value was taken as uh, one atmosphere reference temp temperature was 25 degree centigrade. So, the concept of absolute entropy is used to um, find the um, entropy of the ideal gas mixture. Okay, with this uh, we have uh, come to the end of this uh, contents of the student lectures. Now, we will uh, based on the lecture contents or whatever contents we have covered we will try to solve some numerical problems. The first problem is uh, based on air fuel ratio calculation or fuel air ratio calculation on molar and mass basis for a complete combustion process. And here we have used the um, uh, word octane as the fuel. We have to calculate this air fuel ratio for a theoretical air situation excess air situations and when you are using the excess air we have to find out the equivalence ratio. So, when such a problems comes first thing you have to write two equations one is balanced chemical reaction between fuel and oxidizer other is unbalanced equations unbalanced equation means when we have excess air or excess fuel. So, it is a octane oxygen combustion. Uh, so, uh, com balanced reaction we can write as C 8 H 18 is the fuel which is octane and it has to mix with air. So, air means we do not know the coefficients. So, I write it as A times O 2 plus 3.76 n2. So, it will give you B times CO2 plus uh, C times H2O plus D of n2. So, first thing we have to do uh, balance. balancing the com components carbon here we have 8 number of carbon you have b so carbon we can say b is equal to 8 then next thing is hydrogen hydrogen we have 18 number here we have twice c so, twice C is equal to 18 which implies C is equal to 9. Then nitrogen. 
So, balancing nitrogen we can say 3.7 times 6 times A here, A nitrogen is D here. Uh, so, you can write is D is equal to 3.76 times A. Already we do not know A, so then we have to calculate the oxygen. So, we can write left hand side it is twice, right hand side is twice B plus C is equal to twice A. So, we know C, we know B, we know C. So, this will give you A is equal to 12.5. When I say A is equal to 12.5, this will say D is equal to 47. So, the balance reaction now becomes C18, H8, C8, H18 plus 12.5 O2 plus 3.76 and 2 it gives 8 CO2 plus 9 H2O plus 47 N2. Then we are now in a position to calculate the mole fractions or and as well as the mass fractions. So, before that for this fuel we can write molecular weight of fuel that is C8 H18. C8 H18 in for uh, fuel we will have uh, 12 into 8, 8 times molecular weight of carbon is 12 and there are number is 8. So, it 12 into 8 plus hydrogen 18 into 1. So, molecular weight of fuel is 114. We all know molecular weight of air is 28.97. So, we are now in a position to calculate air fuel ratio on molar basis that is 12.5 plus 12.5 into 3.76 that is number of moles of air in the and, and number of moles of air and number of moles of fuel is 1. So, this is 59.5 kilo mole air by kilo mole fuel. Now, uh, if I calculate air fuel ratio, because we know air fuel ratio in molar form F bar multiplied by M of air and M of fuel. So, this number is AF air fuel ratio is 15.1 kg air by kg fuel. Here it is kilo mole, it is kg. So, this is how what happens is a stoichiometric conditions. Now, second part which you are going to study when you have 120 percent theoretical OAR. That means, this coefficient has to be in, uh, increased by 20 percent. So, the reaction will now become C18 H18 plus it is 1.2 times excess air. So, I can write this 1.2 into 12.5 into O2 plus 3.72 n2 3.76 n2 will give you b times co2 we do not know this coefficient c times h2o plus d times n2 plus e times o2 so this coefficient needs to be calculated 
So, we have uh, um, now from these equations, uh, this reactant side all known parameters, product side we have unknown parameters. By repeating same principle balancing the components, we can get like this B is equal to 8, C is equal to 9, D is equal to 56.4, E is equal to 2.5. Now, after putting this, we rewrite this equation as C18 H18 plus 15 times O2 plus 3.76 N2 will give 8 CO2 plus 9 H2O plus 56.4 N2 plus 2.5 O2. So, here air fuel ratio we can write F bar would be 12.5 into 1.2 plus 12.5 into 1.2 into 3.76 divided by 1. So, this parameter is for oxygen, this parameter is for nitrogen. So, this number will give you uh, 71.4 kilo mole air divided by kilo mole fuel. Now, once we, once we know air fuel ratio, we can write if uh, this air fuel ratio on mass basis that is F bar into M A by M F. So, this number would be 18.15 kg air by kg fuel. Now, last parameter what is the equivalence ratio? So, equivalence ratio phi we can write is F by stoichiometric divided by air fuel ratio of uh, actual. So, both the numbers we have uh, we know stoichiometric value is 15.5. 1 divided by 18.15. So, this is about 8.833. Other way of to find out is phi is also equal to F bar stoichiometric by F bar actual. This number will also lead to 0.833 which means phi is less than 1. Okay. Now, next problem is uh, uh, the um, data analysis for a methane air combustion. When this methane is methane is combusted with air and we get the combustion products and those combustion products consist of CO2, CO, O2 and N2 with their respective compositions. We need to find out air fuel ratio on molar and mass basis, percentage of theoretical air and dew point temperature. So, for this case also we uh, we say it is a methane A times C H floor plus oxygen B times O 2 plus 3.76 N 2. 
so this is the reactant site and this is air and this is methane and it reacts to form C times CO2 which is this plus and we know this C, C is 9.8 time point CO2 plus uh, D times means 0 0.6, 0 0.6 times CO plus 86.6 times uh, N2 plus 3 times O2 and of course we get water. Uh, this water is C times which is unknown C times CO2 C times H2O. So, basically unknown are stoichiometric uh, uh, coefficients of methane, air and water. Known quantities are the molar analysis for CO2, CO, O2 and N2. So, we have to do the balancing. Balancing of stoichiometric coefficients. And if it is, it will result what uh, A as 10.4, B as 23.5, C as uh, C as 20.8. Now, once we have this, then we are in a position to write this complete balanced equations that is 10.4 times CH4 plus 23.5 times O2 plus 3.76 N2 will give you 9.8 CO2 plus 0 0.6 CO plus 86.6 N2 plus 3O2 plus 20.8 H2O. Now, we have MCH4 that is methane 16, MAR 28.97, then we can calculate air fuel ratio AF bar is N number of moles of air number of moles of fuel and fuel we can say it is 10.4 which is here. Air is 23.5 into 1 plus 3.76. This number is 10.75 kilo mole air by kilo mole fuel. Then once we know AF bar then we can find AF on mass basis MAR by M fuel and this number would be AF by into M air by M fuel. By putting this number we get it is 19.47 kg air by kg fuel. So, we get air fuel ratio on molar and mass basis percentage of theoretical air. So, if it is a balanced chemical reaction what would have been that CH4 plus twice times O2 plus 3.76 N2 will give you CO2 plus twice H2O plus 2 into 3.76 N2. 
then in that case your AF bar would have been which is stoichiometric value N AR by N fuel that is twice times 1 plus 3.76 divided by 1 it is 9.52 kilo mole air by kilo mole fuel. So, percentage of theoretical air air would be like AF bar by AF bar stoichiometric into 100. So, it is 113 that is 13% percent excess air. By putting this number 10.75 divided by 9.52. Third point is calculate the dew point temperature of the products is mixture where tap cool to 1 bar. So, there basically the products that water is forming dew. So, what is the mole fraction of this number? So, you can say water is available as component stoichiometric coefficient 20.8. So, you can say uh, mole fraction of water vapor as 20.8 divided by 100 plus 20.8. So, this number is 0 0.172. Now, partial pressure of water vapor is uh, YV into P, P is 1 bar. So, this number is 0 0.1744 bar. So, we know this partial pressure and corresponding to this partial pressure, we refer saturated pressure treble for water and this will give you temperature as about approximately 60 degree centigrade. So, it means when these temperature products are cooled at 1 bar water will form dew and this dew point temperature is 60 degree centigrade at that partial pressure. So, this is how the problems are solved for uh, you can see here one is uh, on stoichiometric situation other is a non stoichiometric situations. With this I come to the end for this lecture today. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.